you have a little sister that grew up without him and really, really was, really misses him. You have to look into the family members. You have to look into the people that were involved with all of this. And I don't know how much interrogation they did on these people, but the kids just didn't fly off the air. We didn't have more reports of other kids being missing, of other kids being, you know, sold or traded. We just had the Senate kids, that's it. And where are the Senate kids? Mike Cordova. Mike Cordova was dating Francis, who is Billy's mom. Mm -hmm. okay. It was no sooner than she left him that all this happened, too. Now we're going police get sick. <laughs> Coor Southwest with Michael Cordova. Let's keep going on these days. Let's go. As if the family could have been behind this. This is number eight. And this is number eight. This yes. This is the neighbor. And this is the big one. You know, maybe that guy that did come to our door was the person who, who took them, and God knows what he did with them. We promised you that we would bring something to you. Whatever we found, whatever we discovered, we were going to bring it to you. So we did another interview. Here's a sketch that he drew. everyone, I'm Crystal. I was a TV news reporter and anchor for more than 15 years, covering stories of remarkable people, tragedies that turned into heartbreak, and stories that are now part of history. But there are some stories that just stick with you. Wait, how many missing persons cases do you believe you have? Wish on every, shooting star. every year, tens of thousands of people are listed as missing. Can you see how we've come so far? So I called in the expertise of my longtime friend, retired detective, now private investigator, Lewis. No, I don't believe that. I really don't believe that. It, there's no evidence behind it. You know? Together, we're diving into cases that sit untouched for years. Like maybe they missed something. I feel they focus too much on him. I think so. And it may not have been him the whole time. And hitting the road. All right, you ready? Farmington, here we come. Along the way, we'll talk to those left behind. She was wonderful. She was my older sister. Something feels missing. Just want her home. Something's not right. And to those who were part of the investigation. I mean, the same dog found uh, burnt remains. All in hopes of uncovering new details. He has never been interviewed by police. That's the person that I think did it to give families some closure as we go beyond the case. Again, again, again. Okay, and I go all the way. Three, two. Hey everyone, welcome back to Beyond the Case. I'm Crystal. I'm Lewis. Welcome to our headquarters. We're in our office this time around. That's right. This is where we actually do a lot of the gumshoe work, a lot of the investigative pieces, and a lot of the back and forths on these cases. Arguing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> As you can see from my work, we have a lot of cases to investigate, but this is our epicenter of Beyond the Case. Right. And this week, we are digging deeper into the disappearance of 11-year-old Billy Senna and his cousin, 9-year-old Mary Lou. They were last reportedly seen riding their bikes about a block away from their house. In the police report, officers searched vacant warehouses. They visited some of the homes of extended family. They interviewed some of them, and they even conducted two searches by cadaver dogs. And when we say some, it really is just some, because we uncovered there's a lot of family members they didn't talk to back then. That's right. And this case has been alive since 1979. That's so right. this case is decades old and we were having to dig really deep to kind of go back in time and uh, take a look at the steps that not only law enforcement right. did right, but some of the missteps that they did as well. Out of the nine theories that we've uncovered that you know police l uh, looked into, we've actually debunked about six of them, right? right. Some of them were the railroad car, right? Mm -hmm. Being that, stuck in there? Right. Also that they possibly ran away. Right. Uh, that they were seen in an apartment by uh, some witnesses. And the two teen, preteen boys, I should say, found a severed head inside a ditch that was all debunked. So 
We're scrapping those out. Three. We're down to three. That's we're down to three. Does include one of the kids who lived right near Mary Lou had something strange happen to them uh, just days after the kids disappeared. He contacted police in 2014. Police never did a full interview with him, but we did. We also found information that has never been reported uh, back in 1979. If you've not watched episode one yet and you're trying to figure out what we're talking about, go watch it right now. If you have, get ready for episode two. Let's go. I've been trying to look for these things to hold on to. But I do think it's, it's interesting though that like this could be the turning point in this whole case. Oh, so. Dealing with the loss of your brother. Yeah. I don't want to cry again. <laughs> <laughs> Without him in my life, I mean, he was my protector, you know? He really was. And I hate to say it more than my mother. We promised you that we would bring something to you. Whatever we found, whatever we discovered, we were going to bring it to you. So we did another interview. Here's a sketch that he drew. Uh, so we need to break it down. Who are we looking at? Oh, well, correctly, Phyllis was watching them, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Phyllis was watching the kids, uh, and she did not have a, any clue of what the, ki the kids were. The last thing she reported was that they were riding their bikes. Right. They were riding their bikes, and and as if you recall, down the uh, in the reports, the post office is that the kids were seen riding their their bicycles by the post office. Mm -hmm. That was the last the last place they were seen here in Albuquerque. Whoever is responsible for their disappearance could help lead us to where the kids are. Yes. So you, we really need to focus on that. Who do we think could have possibly have been behind this? We don't think they ran away. No. So let's go with what we're left with. So we're down to three. Where do you want to start? Mike Cordova. Mike Cordova was dating Francis, who is Billy's mom. Mm -hmm. okay. When she finally decided to get up and leave him, it was no sooner than she left him that all this happened too. All we have are key statements from Billy's mom and now Billy's sister that Michael Cordova, what they claim was abusive to both Billy and to Francis, Billy's mom. And uh, the whole pot plant mystery that keeps surfacing where they felt he was upset because he thought Billy had taken his pot plants, therefore he could have done something to him. Wednesday, April 4th, 2012. Time is about 1328. Detective Lewis, Detective Torgerson, Albuquerque Police, be at 7. Coor Southwest with Michael Cordova. Hello, Bobby. Hi, Bubba. I'm Rich Lewis. Sorry. This is Dan Torgerson. Nice to meet you. Mike is, um, we're looking into the disappearance of the Senate children back in 1979. <laughs> And I guess, as far as I can tell from the um, your investigation, did you ever talk to my police? Okay, do you know, remember, did they take a statement from you, or? You know what, it's been so long that I can't remember what it was about. It was just maybe ask some questions. What happened? Okay. Because there's nothing in the uh, old case file. Uh, in fact, did, there's a did note they ever they find those? Yeah, they never found them. And we're still still looking. We've done some recent searches. We're trying to do some more follow-up on them. So, were you 
Why don't you tell me about your relationship? You were dating Francis at the time? Yes, yes. And Francis me. is Mary Lou's biological mother? Or is it Billy's biological mother? Billy's. Okay. Tell me what you remember about the time. At the time, we were not, we were separated. Okay. She was staying with her, uh, her friend of hers, and she lived also in the escape at the time. Do you know who that friend is? Uh, her name was... Tell me about your relationship with uh, Billy. Uh, Billy was a smart little boy, okay. very smart. Did you ever have any issues with him, problems with him? No, we never had a problem with him. Okay. Um, there's been a lot of allegations. In fact, Francis gave us a real detailed statement about a lot of abuse from you to Billy and Francis. Tell me about that. I don't think there's any abuse. According to Francis, it was pretty, pretty abusive, and that's why she had separated and moved out. Does that ring a bell? Yeah. According to Francis, and she's still specific, on the Tuesday before the kids went married, hey, or went hey, missing, hey. you came home and you physically abused Francis. Francis and the children left. And then the following day, she and the children came back to get her property, and that's when Billy took some of your plants from your marijuana grow in the backyard. Does that ring a bell? Yeah, I did have a few plants back there, but uh, I don't know if that was the case or not. And then you contact Francis and you confront her about the theft of the plants. And that's Thursday before the kids get missing. And you know what? Those plants were missing when we had gone to Las Vegas. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we had come back. And so it, it, it was not even, I don't know where that came out from. Okay, that's from her statement. Do you know why Francis and Sarah would have made statements like that that you were so abusive you know, to Billy? I have no idea. And I don't know if those statements mean anything as far as what we're really trying to get at. I have no idea. So, it's your recollection today that you were never abusive physically to well, I mean, Francis we, or Billy? We, we all yell at each other and stuff like that. You know, we get an argument like that, but that's, that's how we used to go. You ever have to strike Billy? Yeah. Okay. Do you know what happened to the children? No, I don't. Okay. And you, and you do remember speaking to the police back in 1979? Yes, I did. Okay. Do you remember where you were when you found out that the kids were missing? You guys were separated at the time. Yeah, we were separated. So she called you? Or, uh, remember how you got notified or how? Were you driving a vehicle at that time? Had a vehicle? You remember what it was? Could have been a Pinto or something. Yeah, or maybe a more Pinto maybe? Pinto? Remember what color? A cream colored pinto? I'm sorry, cream? Yeah. You think that's the uh, car you took to the state fair and you drove around Martinez Town looking for? I don't know. It could have been a truck too. I had a. Okay. What color was your truck? The color of the truck was gold. In fact, the state fair was on too. That's another thing. The state yeah. fair was on at the time. And I remember me and her walking through the whole state fair you know, that night looking for the kids and stuff like that. So I don't know. You know, that, that idea when they said about going to Mexico or something like that, so you want take them over there or something like that, that always kind of, kind of thinking maybe something like that, where they, they, they wanted to get away. You know how kids are, when you're a young kid, you want to run away and stuff like that. Um, maybe, I don't know, just part of the thing. Had Billy told anything or said anything to you about wanting to run away or having problems with Francis or having problems yeah. at school or anything like that? Yeah. That yeah. Did you believe that he would have left like that? I don't think he would have left. How about Mary Lou? Did she ever say anything I didn't to you? know Mary Lou that well. You know, she was right here with her, about the same age, about the same size. Okay. 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 So tell me about Joe Romero and uh, Phyllis. Did they were drinking and partying with their drugs? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Okay. Did you ever see them violent with the kids? No, no, they were really good people with okay. kids. Did you ever suspect either Phyllis or Joe or Francis were somehow involved in the kids' disappearance? No, because uh, Francis would I mean, that are little babies, you know what I mean? No stories about Mary Lou and stepdad or dad? I didn't know that much about it. 
any allegations of like sexual abuse that you ever heard from Billy or Mary Lou or anything like that? Anything else you can think of, Mr. Cordova, that would help us? I don't think he was he was the main source behind this disappearance. I, I do have to see this is a this is an interesting theory because I have to say that because there was this sort of you know this sent there's just focus on him. You know, they're just centered it on mm -hmm. him that they might have missed other stuff. I 100% agree. I think it was too focused on him at the beginning. But there's more. But if they were so, in f you know, they were so focused on Mr. Cordova, they never got a statement from them. Or at least right. there's not a statement in the police reports. I have to say the second theory is family. Right. And I don't feel they really pressed family in this case at all. Right. After all this time, who do you think did it? <clears throat> what do you think happened? Give me a second here. I really, really have a big uh, thing about my uncles, you know, because they were perverts. You know. I've had them give me hugs and put their hands in places they shouldn't be, you know. So yeah, I, it was a great possibility. We've been we've been looking at this case, and it feels that everybody we're talking to is pointing towards the family. The family was very dysfunctional. Uncles, right? Uh, yes. We're, you know, we've heard from family members. Yes. We've heard from kids that lived in the neighborhood. Yes. We've heard from ex-wives. Yes. Who've said that the family, for some reason, w was very um, um, inappropriate right. with children. Right. And, and, and for the sake of, um, you know, the family and you know, not having the true documents, I think we're in agreement we're not going to name anybody. Right. We can't. They're not named in any law enforcement report as suspects, so we're not going to name them, but we can actually just disclose about the family right. directly. A lot of times, in my experience, when it comes to familial sexual abuse, it gets buried very, very deep in the family, in the dynamics of the family. And a lot of times it goes to the grave with the perpetrators. Fortunately, there's survivors that will come forward and share their stories and share their information. And I'm hoping that if this were to be true on this case, where family suspected of some sort of sexual abuse pornography or whatever they said, that survivors will come forward. It happens and I'm hoping that if that's the case, that we're dealing with something else. Because we've had, we've heard from some survivors right. already. Monday, April 30th, 2012, time is about 1300 hours. Detective Lewis, Albuquerque Police Department at the Metropolitan Detention Center. Interview with Senna. In the case working now is involving Georgia. Yeah, that's good. Um, Billy and Mary Lou. Oh, that's my sister. Yeah. And I wondered, would you talk to me for a few minutes about that? Um, like, you know, we've been trying to find the kids since 1979. You okay? So, I've had the case open for about two years. Um, I've searched the property out on the mountain a couple yes. times. Um, I've done some other searches trying to find the kids. More. So, I'd like to ask you a couple questions. Okay. Tell me about that day, what you remember about that day. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. I knew that I came back to my friend's house and I went home. I remember my mom telling me to go look for them, to go see where they're at. And my brother says, well, they might be at their friends. They're paying with their friends over there at the post office, so we went over and we didn't find nothing. So you went down by the post office in the store and you started looking for them? Yes. There's been, I've heard all kind of rumors about their bikes. Did anybody ever find their bicycles that day? I'm, that's what I'm, I don't, I remember they had bikes, but I can't, I can't remember about their bikes. Do you remember them sitting around the house afterwards? 
I mean, uh, did you see, you know, uh, did they come, ever come back to the house? I mean, the bison. Oh, the bison. I, I don't even know. I don't even remember the bison. That. I don't know. Billy and Mary Lou, they were pretty street smart. If somebody tried to yeah, kidnap yeah, them, yeah, yeah. If somebody yeah. tried to kidnap them, so they're gonna fight and run. Yeah, they would. They're That's, tough. They're tough kids. Yeah. They're growing up in a tough neighborhood. Yeah, they, you're right about that. Um, so if a stranger like me pulls up, would yeah. Billy and Mary Lou get in my car? They would just get in. Cause, uh, yeah, they would. They would. They would have just, you know, they're not enticed by money or candy or anything. They're not dumb. No. And they knew the streets. They, they, yeah, I mean, yeah. at that young age, they were, you know, on the neighborhood. Yes. Yeah. Which always led us to believe that it was, and you know, in these cases historically across the country, it's usually 99% stuff. Somebody? Yeah. I don't know, you heard something about a van? Yeah, I've heard that rumor. Tell me about what you know about any van. You know, that's, you know, okay, he had a van. I don't know, he was kind of weird, you know, um, I don't know if you know the address where he did that, he did on the next block, um, he's dead now, he's in Romero, okay. but he was always, you know, he was just, like, kind of weird, you know, and I, I told my mom about that, and she was like, I don't know, I know this and that, and, um, I always thought something about that man, you know what I mean? Okay, what color was the man? At that time, it was like a, like a, like a, Blue turquoise. Why did you did you hear anything, or did somebody were there rumors? Why why did the band come up? I don't know. It's just because um, I remember I went through one time and he was always watching dirty dirty flicks. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then, and then um, his son and daughter they were always. Uh, I think I don't know. I think for some reason I think they were sexual abuse. I'm you know and I'm just. You think I'm they're kids or something? Yeah, they're, they're kids, you know. Okay. Yes. Um, recently I got a call from a woman that knew your brother real well. She went to school. Before he passed away, they talked about this, and she was surprised I still was investigating the case because your brother told her that before Joe passed away, he confessed to kidnapping and murdering the kids. No, did you ever hear no, no, no. Did you ever hear anything like that? Did your brother ever talk to anything like that? Uh, my brother would have told, he would have told my brother, me and my brother were like this. Okay. But he couldn't do that. He wouldn't do that. He, there's, there's no way. It's, I don't know why that girl said that, why, or, or she wants, I don't know. She doesn't really want anything out of it. She was just, yeah. when she moved back to Albuquerque recently, she was, she saw online that we were still investigating the disappearance. And she called and she thought that she just was, I'm really surprised you're still with somebody else. And I said, why would you be surprised we're still looking? She goes, well, I knew the family. Just on this second theory about confessions, right? That certain family members confessed. Before they died. Before they died. And then that person they confessed to died. Before he died. Before died, he died. He spoke. But he spoke with somebody else. It's, it's, you know, it's a chain. All right, the Senate kids. Okay. I really want to find the ex-wife. Oh. Or I should say the sister-in-law of Mary Lou. In the world, do you remember we're in this case? This case is so huge. We're that part of Found it. Here it is. So those are possible associates. It's just an associate and that's a relative. 
So here's my subject, right? And she sees he's deceased. You know, we could kind of figure out who's who. That's about the same age. Right. That's relative. Hi, this is Crystal Gutierrez. Is this Ruby? Yes, it is. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, sorry to interrupt you today. Uh, we are working on... Uh, the big case here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, the Senna kids, Billy and Mary Lou. Yes, yes. Yes, I was wondering um, your relationship to <laughs> Senna. Mary? He was, he's the father of my children. Okay, okay. Um, Ruby, if, was his sister. Yes, yes. We're, we're trying to get more information on this case, and there was just something that really struck us. Um, uh -huh about this case that uh, somebody said that uh, possibly mentioned that his father was maybe involved. Did you ever hear anything like that? Yes, yes, yeah. They did believe that something. Either that he sold them off or I mean, you know, uh, sold them off for uh, child sets and that they killed them and buried them in the mountains somewhere. Wow himself was molested by his uncle and his parents did nothing about it he was raped for years and this is your husband right that we're speaking yes, of yeah okay. my ex he's deceased now You want to move on to the third one? have a neighbor that came forward. Mm -hmm. Back in 2014, contacts Albuquerque police. Yes. He tells them, something strange happened to me and my family. That's right. He was a child at the time. Somebody came to his home and tried to get in a man. Mm -hmm. We spoke to him. Yeah, we did. And what he told us was... <laughs> What if somebody else in that neighborhood had a similar story that happened within days after the Senate kids went missing? If his story is a missing link to the disappearance of these kids, well, we'll never know unless we talk to him, right? Hi, how are you? Thank you so much for talking with us. Um, we won't take too much of your time, but we want to get your story out there just in case somebody else had a similar story. You ready to talk with us? Yes, sir. Let's sit down and talk. Just for security reasons, we are not going to be using your actual name for the interviewer at all during this, this um, episode. We'll be using Miguel, okay? Okay, so let's just start um, with how old were you? I was only seven years old, maybe about to turn eight. Now I'm back in 78. Yeah, so, I mean, I. I just remember just playing with, you know, with Mary Lou, her brother Billy, and the, and her other cousin Billy that mm -hmm. disappeared. I think we're a couple of years uh, apart, though. So you guys are really good friends then. Yeah, well, they used to live like um, we lived in the apartment in the front, and there was a field, and then they lived in the houses that were in the back. Okay. So how close did you guys live? Would you say maybe? Um, it, with feet, feet apart, maybe about. Well, not even a hundred mm -hmm. feet. Mm -hmm. So how often would you guys play together? Uh, we played often because uh, their cousins lived two houses down from us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we'd all get together and we'd go play at uh, the Sears warehouses where, you know, where the rail yard is right, right there. And we'd jump in the rail cars and just, you know, have a blast when we were kids. You would jump inside the rail cars? Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, we would get stuck in there sometimes. Okay. Okay, that's interesting that you say that. Um, and we'll talk about that in just a moment because that's just bringing up a lot of questions for me with this investigation that we've been both just diving right into. Um, I, want, I want to take you back to the day that you found out that Billy and Mary Lou went missing. What were you doing? What were you supposed to be doing that day? The day that they went missing, they had come to our house to see if we wanted to go play hide and seek at the, at the post office which like now it's like totally changed. You know, they used to have grass on the north side of the, of the, 
to the post office and we'd play football there. We'd play uh, uh, hide and seek. And you know, sometimes we'd just go to Manuel's store that was right across the street and buy candy and just sit in the grass and you know, just mess around all day long. Oh. The day they went missing, you were supposed to be with them? Yeah, we were supposed to go and play at the, at the post office with them, but my dad didn't want to let us that day for some reason. We didn't even know they were gone until uh, Joe and Phyllis came to our house and uh, they asked my parents if they had seen Mary Lou. And my dad goes, have you guys seen them? We're like, no, and this was like maybe about two days after they had disappeared. Okay, so let's talk about three days after the kids went missing. What happened to you and your siblings? So my parents were getting ready for work and I remember my, my dad used to work at a, a place where they used to do leather and my mom cleaned hotels. And they took off together because we only had one vehicle at the time. Um, the, the person who came up to our door waited for my parents to leave. And I wouldn't say it was five minutes, maybe three, that the person came up to our door and just knocked, but not looking inside the house. He kind of just stood there and and you know, we just went like So like this. the side of his face. The side of his face was mostly what I saw. Um, he uh, asked if, you know, hey, you guys want to come out inside and play? And um, I looked, because we had a curtain that covered the window, and I looked out the window and I was like, I don't know this guy. And my sister, one of my sisters like actually started crying, so my, my Next to oldest sister, went and put her hand around her mouth so that he wouldn't be able to hear us. And um, at that point, he just, uh, you know, he kind of went around our house. And there was a, I remember there was a big green door that we just would lock with a nail, you know, because, you know, back then we we're, I, everybody felt safe. And um, I put a, a chair against the, the doorknob and the person who went around the side started, he pushed maybe two or three times, couldn't get in, went back out, walked through um, our neighbor Adelita's uh, property and walked all the way through the, the field where the New Mexico Court Solution is now and I never saw that man again. Have you, did you ever see him before that day? Was there something that you thought I might know him? I, the, the only thing that I noticed that was kind of weird is that he had his hair like Joe's. He had it long, had it pulled back in a ponytail. I remember him wearing this big black trench coat because after he took off, I ran outside to see if, you know, if we're okay. And my, I sent my sister to my neighbor's house which they were in their 70s. You know, I don't know if they could have done much, but you know, I sent her over there to, to go let them know. And like I said, I never saw that man again. And Joe was Mary Lou's dad. Joe was Mary Lou's dad. And he had a similar hairstyle as Joe. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you don't think it was Joe? No. no he no. looked different. Yeah. Yeah, this guy had, he had his aviator glasses on. I remember those, I remember his his, he had like big earlobes and I, I kind of knew it wasn't Joe because of his teeth, you know, and this, and Joe, Joe like always had, like had a, like an accent, like a New Mexico, you know, Northern New Mexico accent. And this guy kind of did, but not as, not as uh, rough as uh, Joe's. What was kind of like weird is my little sister kind of resembled Mary Lou in a way. So Joe and Phyllis would come just to you know remember what their daughter. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. And uh, you know they'd be like me, he thought me, he thought you know just 
I'm holding my sister, just wishing that, you know, they have their daughter back. What made you decide to call Albuquerque Police? Um, sorry, it's just like, you know, because they're my friends, so it kind of gets me. Um, my little boy, well, we're living in an apartment, and uh, he he ran out of the of the yard, the backyard, and you know my my ex-wife went and you know where's and so we went looking for him, and you know we found him over there by the by a dumpster, and we we're telling him, hey, don't ever do that, you know, because it's, it's dangerous. People could come get you and take you, and. When we were walking back to the apartment, I told my ex, you know, that actually happened to a couple of friends of mine. And she goes, what are you talking about? And I go, I had a friend named Mary Lou and Billy Senna who they disappeared from, a, from the post office like years ago. And she goes, did they ever find them? I go, I don't, I don't think so. And she goes, did you, uh, have you ever looked? And she goes, and I told her, no, I never, never even, you know, really thought about it. And uh, she goes, well, let's go, let's just go check. So <laughs> it was like so weird because it was 30 years to the day that they got kidnapped that we looked on the computer and it just scared me. <laughs> I, um, I tried to contact them again after, you know, let's see if they had said anything to Billy's sister and they had told me that they had turned over the case to some other detective. I want to see your sketch, because I know you have it. Yeah. I'm not the greatest of artists, but um, that's the person that I think did it. What distinguishing features, if you could point at them, really stood out for you the most that day? First, you know, his, like I said, his, his aviator glasses. Because not a lot of people wore him. You know, it was like, they, like, they were like, mostly had money and stuff like that. And I never seen anybody wear those, but that guy, um, his, his ears, he had big meaty ears, um, his hair, you know, just like, I didn't know anybody else who had hair like that, but, but Joe, um, his nose was like, you know, a little beaky, but big. And, you know, I, he, like when I saw him, like, I would probably say he was probably about 5'10 and probably about 180 to 200 pounds. He was a big guy. I've investigated many, many of cases and uh, nowhere in this case file, uh, Miguel, is your story. I've been trying to look for all of these things to hold on to, but oh, I'm finding better with you hold on to me tight as we dive into the blue. gives me chills and i'll have to admit this gives me chills is when this person says something to the effect of do you guys want to come out and play right right i mean what child wouldn't be traumatized by that you know wow for 30 long years she's been waiting to try to find some type of answer and like we could potentially have something right. that could be very crucial right. in leading to some resolution. See what she says. Something feels missing, something's not right. I had it all written, but the ink never dried. Throw out the page. What do I say if all I thought I wanted went running away? 
one deep so he met with him we did the interview and he showed us a sketch we're going to show you now and you tell me if there's anything in the sketch that looks like somebody that you recognize from way back then okay Here's a sketch that he drew. Lewis went and blew it up. It doesn't, like, strike a bone where I'm like, oh, you know, nothing like that. No. Mike didn't look like that. Mike was really handsome. Mike come on, reminded me like Elvis Presley. Right. Except without the blue or green eyes or whatever. I think he had blue eyes on Elvis. <laughs> but um, yeah, I can still see Mike's face in my head. Not perfectly, that I could even draw up a sketch, but pretty close, like I said, more leaning on the Elvis Presley side. So this does not look like Michael Cordova? No. And he doesn't think it does either? Okay. Who else do you think it might look like? In the family, and nothing, I mean, it could be a total stranger. For all I know, um, the sketch to me looks more pachuco, you know what I mean, cholo type of a guy, and. It does not ring a bell. No. No. Do you know what we're going to do? We're going to put this in the episode. And if somebody recognizes him, you know, we want to talk to him. We want to talk to whoever this man was. We don't know if we're going to find him. We don't know if he's the person that has to do with your brother or Mary Lou's disappearance. But we do know that this was somebody that was in the neighborhood, terrorized some kids mm -hmm. just days after your brother disappeared. People say, oh, I don't believe in God and all that stuff. We can't exist that there wasn't a God. And I know I'll see him someday. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Take your time. This is going to be shared with so many people. I know. And before I let you go, and you know, we, we go in and leave. And if there's any further tips that come in, we're going to come right back here. We're going to talk to you. Okay. Um, is there anything that you would want to tell somebody out there who may be watching it that knows something? Just to please come forward so we can have closure. I mean, maybe just me because everybody's gone. You know, my mom's dead now. My dad's dead now. But I do have family members that are are rooting for some answers. Whoever is responsible for their disappearance could help lead us to where the kids are. Yes. There are groups of people who do nothing other than find ancient graves, and we've we've done that work. Portion of the dirt that was collapsing and was kind of uh, compressing while you were doing that. Yeah, it was in the spot here, and I got like some, you know, like you know, you can get like chills all over your body, you know, run up your neck and stuff. Maybe someday we could. I, mean, I was thinking about like maybe we could make like some type of shrine or a bury, a burial place, just something to remember him. People get to visit their dead family members at the cemetery. I can't do that. <laughs>